it's Friday afternoon, and you're craving some delicious grad student delicacy. You know this, right? But when you give your card to the cashier, he has a nasty surprise. Card declined, zero balance. Wait a minute, didn't you just get paid? You immediately contact your bank, only to discover that a criminal stole your identity. First, he bought your bank account number from an illegal hacked database, and then he went to a legal site that has all your personal details, like your mother's maiden name. With this info, he called your bank using a disposable cell phone, identified himself as you, and then transferred all your money into his untraceable Swiss bank account. You've been hacked. And you know, it's not just hacking that you need to be worried about. Not too long ago, an angry dad of a 15-year-old daughter walked into a Target outside Minneapolis and demanded to talk to the manager. My daughter got this baby ad in the mail, he said. She's still in high school. Are you trying to encourage her to get pregnant? Of course, the manager profusely apologized and actually called a few days later to apologize again. But now, the dad actually had some interesting news. Well, it turns out there have been some activities in my household that uh, I wasn't completely aware of. Uh, my daughter is due in August. Yeah, I, I guess I'm the one who owes you a big apology, right? Wow, that's crazy, right? I mean, how, how did the store know? Well, it turns out that Target's data scientists have identified about 25 products that allow them to assign each female shopper a pregnancy prediction score. So by tracking the daughter's shopping pattern, they were able to predict that she was pregnant even before she had told her own dad. Man, that's crazy. I mean, how did we get to this point where they're apparently hacking and tracking every minute of our existence? Well, here I have to disappoint you a little bit because we kind of did this to ourselves. You know, with every online purchase and filled out survey and Facebook post, we are slowly but steadily chipping away at our privacy. You know, once this kind of information is out there, you can never get it back. So how can we solve this problem? In an interview with John Stewart, the former White House information officer recommended that we could, for instance, just turn off the location trackers in our phones and the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. But seriously, going off the grid, is that the solution? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't survive without the internet. I mean, I get real twitchy if I don't check my Facebook at least once an hour, right? See, there are so many benefits to being online, and no, it's not just cats. But <laughs> the truth is that these benefits come at a cost, and that cost, whether we like it or not, is that we can never be entirely private. So instead of striving for complete privacy, let's at least try to be smart about it. Let's make a careful trade-off between these benefits, like online gaming with your friends, and the potential risks, like the PlayStation Network being hacked and your bank account being raided. Now, as you can imagine, making this trade-off between privacy risks and benefits is a very difficult one, because we don't know what kind of bad things may happen to our data, or when they will happen, or whether anything ba bad will happen at all. And while websites and apps are increasingly allowing us to share every aspect of our daily lives with a simple click of a button, they're not exactly helping us in making these difficult privacy decisions. So, as I saw internet users struggle to trade off these privacy risks and benefits, I asked myself, can I help these people to make better online privacy decisions? I made this the main topic of my PhD, and I will now give you one example of a study in which I improved an, exi an existing technology to become less privacy invasive. So, as many of you will know, modern web browsers have this auto-completion feature that automatically fills out web forms with one simple click. 
Now, currently, this feature only works for contact information. But I think that in the very near future, it will be able to fill out forms with all kinds of personal details. Now, I would say that that's quite convenient, right? Especially for mobile browsers, because it's a real pain to fill out a form on a mobile device, right? Right. But there may also be a dark side to this. Because these tools typically fill out all the fields, even those that are not required. But the easier it is to submit a fully completed form, the greater the chance that users will skip carefully weighing the risks and benefits of disclosing each piece of potentially private information. I mean, these tools simply make it too convenient to just scroll all the way to the bottom and press submit without thinking about it. So I conducted an online user experiment to find out whether this would indeed happen and if I could somehow overcome this problem. In my experiment, participants first entered a wide range of personal information items into an auto-completion tool, which I called the form filler. They filled in their contact information, their personal interests, job skills, and health record items. Now then I asked them to test this tool on one of three external websites, each presenting a personalized service. Now, each of these websites actually matched with a particular subset of the previously collected information. So I had a blogging community that matched with the personal interests, a job search tool that matched with the job skills, and then a health insurer that matched with the health record items. But note that the web forms on these websites actually requested all the information, not just the relevant items, but also the less relevant stuff. All right, now, in general, I found that people were more likely to disclose the information that kind of matched the purpose of the website. So they were most likely to disclose their personal interests to the blogging community, their job skills to the job search website, and their health record information to the health insurer. And it makes sense. In, in general, their disclosure decisions were, I would call, purpose-specific. But with this in mind, I feared that users of the traditional auto-completion tools would actually forego this selective and purpose-specific behavior. So to solve this problem, I invented two new auto-completion tools, and I ended up testing all three. So first of all, the traditional auto-completion tool, which automatically fills out the form, and then the users can remove or change the information manually. Then my first invention, the remove form filler, which is like the auto form filler, but users can click on a button at the end of each field to remove the information from that specific field. And then finally, the add form filler, which does not fill out the form automatically, but users can click on a button at the end of each field to add the pre-collected information to that specific field. Now, as I feared, Users of the auto form filler made very strange disclosure decisions. I mean, they were most likely to disclose their health record information to the blogging community and least likely to disclose their job skills to the job search website. That's completely wrong. Users of the remove form filler, on the other hand, made beautifully purpose specific disclosure decisions. And users of the ad form filler made better decisions as well. And they were also more satisfied with their interaction with the form filler. So my form fillers, my new tools, improve upon traditional auto-completion tools by making people more considerate of a website's purpose in deciding what to disclose. So that's a really good thing. But can I make these form fillers even better for you? Let's see. I could combine the add and remove form filler and automatically decide which fields to fill based on the type of website and your personal preferences. In a similar fashion, I could personalize any of your online privacy settings. You would still be able to change them yourself as well, but I would give you a sensible default that actually matches your personal privacy preferences. Now, Facebook recently introduced the privacy dinosaur. Isn't it cute? So this tool actually gives you advice on how to set your privacy settings. 
Now, my idea is to adapt this advice to your personal privacy preferences, just like how Netflix adapts which movies it shows you based on your personal movie preferences, right? So this kind of adaptive advice is really important because, let's face it, nobody has time to go through Facebook's 150 privacy settings, right? And nobody has time to read its privacy policy, which is currently longer than the US Constitution. <laughs> so today, I'm working with colleagues and UCI students and several large tech companies to try and crack the code on people's privacy decision behavior. Because once I can predict your privacy preferences, I can help you in a simple yet personal way. Addressing the privacy decision problem is crucial because an increasingly important part of our social and financial lives happens online. And if we constantly feel that we're being monitored and hacked and tracked, then how can we freely express ourselves, right? So it is my wish that with a little help from my systems, you can soon be online without having to worry about disclosing too much information. Then your privacy will once again be yours. Thank you.